Hey guys, back again with uh, another uh, how to paint digitally video. This time I'm going to be tackling uh, the famous uh, Frank Frazetta and doing a master study of him. Uh, Frank Frazetta has been one of my favorites uh, for a while now, since one of my friends had uh, introduced me to him. And I like used to look at some images when I was a kid and I never really knew that he did those like images and these things were like masterpieces. So now I get to actually put in some appreciation and try to tackle his master painting. Alright, um, so without further ado, let's get into this video. Alright, this is a pretty long video that we're doing, so um, I'm going to be in and out. Um, it's going to be sped up, I think it's like three, three times. So uh, I'm going to try to do some audio commentary while it's going, and it's going to be going pretty fast, so bear with me. So generally, when I do these things, when I start off, I like to, uh, you know, try to work in a line, but also uh, try to define some forms while I'm doing it. So right now, I'm laying out some general colors on the canvas. And I'm trying to stay to as little layers as I can. Um, you know, doing this kind of helps prevent like so many layers later on and then confusion um, if you keep it like you know a little to four layers probably maximum I think I go a little bit above that but you know somewhere around that range is normally good organization but it all depends on you know your workflow and your own style or how you want to do the image So going in, blacking in some more colors. I'm trying to just really establish the lighting from the colors on this. Um, I chose this image because it was pretty interesting, in my uh, point of view. It was like one of the f one of the images of Frank Frazetta, that Frank Frazetta did that uh, was a little bit more interesting, I would say. Um, just the the composition. Um, his choice of composition actually and the type of uh, action that he's portraying in the image um, actually when I first saw this image I didn't like it as much as some of his other stuff but as I really like looked and uh, observed the image I thought it was uh, pretty well done Right now I'm just going in. Um, actually, right here when I'm doing the face, I think I'm actually zoomed in a little too close uh, for this time being. And you're gonna see me go back and uh, redo the face later on. Um, yeah, it's just one of those things that I have kind of trouble with uh, drawing faces. It usually takes me one or two tries before I like it. The thing that's very, uh, well, that I like a lot about Frank Frazetta's paintings, and I'm pretty sure everybody else does, but, um, is the, the lighting that he does, uh, is it's really, like, extreme and dramatic, and you can kind of feel the image from the lighting. I mean, I'm most likely not the other, only other person who likes it because of that, but, um, yeah, I mean, like, his lighting... It's excellent. He pushes it to the max. And I'm going to try to achieve that in this uh, painting. Um, going in, uh, you know, just trying to really define his nose. Yeah, I'm not really liking his face at all. It's just not looking right. And I had like gone into detail with it and zoomed in a little too early. So I'm gonna take a step back out.
one of the, one of the things to really uh, push your lighting with is um, adding that harsh, like almost black, to your lightest light in a sense. Like how the red, and then it's dark black in a sense, and the skin tone. You know that kind of pushes the form a lot more. some highlights to the monster um, right now when I'm looking at it I'm feeling like everything's a little cramped and they look really short or at least the monster does <laughs> but that's gonna get uh, edited a little, a little bit later on slowly fleshing out the background For the most part, I do stay at this uh, zoomed in level. Kind of helps uh, work the whole image. And like in my other videos, I, you know, I like to go from like uh, a mid-tone value and then work from there going from either dark or light. This way I have, I feel as if I have more control over my colors and I can push them, you know, gradually. I was just thinking about um, adding a soft blue light under his uh, cape-like material. Uh, I think that would be pretty interesting. Um, in this, in my final one that I had done, I had added a, an axe to the guy's arm, to the monster's arm. You know, that's, and that's not originally in the the painting. But um, like always, when I do. Uh, master studies or master copies I don't try to exactly copy everything they do I try to make the study into my own in a sense but take the essence of the study the lighting the form just give it your own thing or try to implement an element that's not in the original inside yours it kinda what that does is kinda takes what you've learned while you were doing the master study and applies it in the same picture. Yeah, still going in and adding smaller and smaller details. I'm liking the face a lot better now. Uh, and I'm just working in the highlights. I was a big fan of the brush that I'm using right now. Um, uh, it's kind of like this round brush but kind of chalky like 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 the chalk brush but round in a sense but uh, unfortunately I had lost all my brushes 
And I don't know how that happened at all. <laughs> Just randomly one day all my brushes were gone. So, but it's okay though. A lot of people ask like, you know, like what what are the brushes you use? Not just me, but you know, like other artists. And um, you know, it, it's really not based on the brushes you use. You can always make a awesome brush. You know, it's really understanding the fundamentals first, and then using like all the other flashy stuff. Gonna add like some little steers behind them. We're trying to, you know, achieve that effect. There's a technique uh, I kind of learned while doing this. Um, well, I'm not. I'm pretty sure other people do it, but you know, I found this out on my own. Um, basically, adding a soft color kind of highlight to a dark area, kind of takes away most of the black in the shadows and what that does is you know it just gives it more of a pop on the skin you know color variation etc you know because normal skin isn't just one color and what that also does is um, makes the black in the shadow more of a mid-tone and then you can go in and add either more dark to the actual shadow area that was uh, soft brushed or you can add another highlight it's really hard to explain but you will see me do it a couple times during this video You can kind of see it on his uh, his shoulder right there too, where there's like this soft red light in the shadow of his uh, armpit area. I was really having a tough time with this guy's face. Um, it was really hard for me to uh, achieve, but I think my ending result was pretty well done. And there me going, that's where I'm using the soft brush technique. And then I'm going and adding highlights to it. The knee, I, I think, in the human body is an interesting, uh, has an inter interesting formation to it. It's like three balls like <laughs> stacked on each other, which sounds kind of funny, but just the way the lighting hits off the knee in certain certain situations really gives it like this. Uh, how would I say? like edge or strength to the character
going back in, adding some highlights, defining this guy's face. He has such a sad expression on his face, like, he had no idea that this guy was coming and just like, this guy attacked him so unexpectedly. Actually, doing this side of his face actually uh, helped me a lot in understanding form and lighting on the face. I actually had fun doing it. <laughs> Dressing his arm. I thought it was a little bit too high. And, you know, I'm still looking at the picture and the canvas still seems a little cramped. Yep, so I'm going in and adjusting it. And filling in the layer. Adjusting him too, a little bit taller. Yeah, I felt like he was short. You know, don't ever be afraid to fix something that's wrong in the image if it's really bothering you. Um, usually it only takes like a couple minutes and, you know, the payoff is a lot better than just leaving it and you not liking the way and knowing that you can push it a little bit better. trying to get this leg down uh, it's pretty hard to do because um, the bottom of the foot was actually next to uh, a light background and his skin tone is pretty light itself so it was kind of blending in the back a little too much you can see so I'm going to try to fix that a little bit later on always trying to work the whole image and not focusing uh, too much on one thing. Uh, this, brush, this brush gave really good textures. And yeah. <laughs> I wish I still really had it, but... Finding his face a bit more. Right there, I'm trying to give the impression that, you know, his body's moving and his pecs are like flexing and pulling, you know, the muscles in his chest and stuff. So I'm trying to add these hard edges. soft light brush, well not soft light brush, I'm sorry, with the uh, soft brush.
floor. Like these little cracks and everything, so. I actually had like a sword in his hand. A little a little dagger I would say actually, not really a sword. So I'm gonna try to bring that into this. some more details he has these earrings he's like this tribal guy but all this stuff is going to be done on a, another separate layer so like I did right here I'm adjusting it uh, just, you know, just subtle details on it all you really need you don't have to go in and add too much and now playing with the, uh, the lasso tool a lot of these uh, man-made objects these really sharp edges to them and harsh lighting and you know the lasso tool really helps achieve that effect uh, and, and this dagger is not really uh, a huge part of the image you know your eye leads to there eventually so you know just like in the necklace and everything it doesn't need a crazy amount of detail on it just enough to you know make it look as if it's 3D and you know, fit in the outfit, fit in the actual illustration. I'm just carving it out a little bit. I'm adding some texture. Soft lights and define it. In the original image that Frank Frazetta did, this guy's arm was actually pretty detailed. But um, you know, it was just, I felt that it really didn't need. To, well, I didn't have to uh, put as much detail in the arm. Just because I wanted to focus on the guy and uh, the monster's face, I wanted you to really focus in that area. Um, 
Not everything needs to be super detailed, but the master Frank Frazetta did, did it phenomenally. So I'm not gonna really detail his arm as much. Add in this little shield that's in the background. Um, I was really debating also if I wanted to add it in, but I mean, there was this uh, nice triangular composition going on between the man's face sliding down to the monster, sliding back up, leading up by the cape into the shield, and I thought that was that had an excellent an excellent effect. So I wanted to add it in a little bit late. It's not gonna have as much polish as obviously the guy of the monster, but I'm gonna try to make it fit and still give the same effect. It's looking a bit warped also, so let's see going in and adjusting stuff a little bit more. Going back, when I think about it now, this actual uh, illustration that I did uh, was done a while ago, and you know, going back and looking at it now, uh, you know, I could see it. I can add a couple more things to it, but uh, I think I'm not gonna touch it. And as you can see, this video is already done. So, guys, thank you again for staying with me, watching, and hopefully, you guys learned something. Um, my name is Said Messiah. You can see uh, most of my stuff on my blog at SaidMessiahArts.tumblr.com. And you know, stay on the lookout for more of my videos. And if you like, please thumbs up. Greatly appreciate it. And if you guys have any comments, questions, whatever, jokes, you know, send it my way. I'm always looking for something. So thank you.